Welcome, Ian Adamson, president of World Obstacle, also holder of numerous world championships and world records across the board in um, adventure racing and endurance events. It's a pleasure to have you here. Oh, well, um, pleasure is mine, Josh. It's uh, so nice to meet you. Yeah, yeah, brilliant. Um, so you're going to be joining us at the Hosts and Federation Summit in Lausanne at um, the Moment Pick on Hotel on the 15th of June. Dinner rights holder briefing um, to commercial companies and host cities, but in the virtues of World Obstacle Across and what um, how they can get involved. But first, I'd love to delve into your background. Like I said, numerous world records, numerous world championships, how, and also, if some some might not know, guest professors at two universities, Denver and Colorado, I believe. Uh... I have been a guest professor teaching uh, business, uh, graduate business uh, at uh, CU Boulder um, and DU, that's Denver. Yeah. Uh, so in Denver and in Boulder, so Colorado University is also uh, University of Arizona in industrial design because I have an engineering background as well. Um, and uh, San Francisco in uh, international sport. So I, uh, yeah. I like to teach. <laughs> and I enjoy the opportunity to uh, share uh, knowledge and some experience and things to do and not to do. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Um, yeah. And you've shown that, I mean, you're a contractor at IMG, um, race directors, uh, race direction, course designs. I mean, how's that helped with you, you, you now being the president of World Obstacle? Well, it all ended up being uh, back in sp- Sports governance, which to me is really about being able to provide benefits uh, for the athlete communities in the sport or sports, uh, since I work in, in several. Um, I'm not sure if you knew that I'm also on the board of the International Parkour Federation, mm-hmm. uh, and I've helped set up the International Functional Fitness Federation, which more accurately helped advise, I advised them when they were getting set up. And so I remain quite close to those guys. Uh, and then I, I chair an ad hoc working group for pentathlon. That, which is an obstacle discipline, which makes sense because we're the obstacle federation. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but to your question about how did I get here, it, coincidence of things, a long career. I've been, um, I'm 60, close enough. So that's afforded me a lot of time to accumulate all sorts of odds and ends along the way. Uh, I was a professional athlete. Actually, my grandfather was a national federation president for uh, the Australian Soccer Football Federation. Maybe it was an association. He was a uh, soccer international for football international for Scotland uh, as a youth. So he he immigrated to Australia and and then picked it back up again uh, and worked in sports governance there. So I sort of grew up in that world, not really knowing as a kid what it meant at all. Actually, I had no idea. <laughs> I only <laughs> found out many many decades later when I got to get involved at the international level myself. But um I, we were surrounded by sport or i was surrounded by sport as a kid my dad worked in cycling he was a good age group cyclist and my grandfather was a soccer international and so it was sort of part of the part of the environment which was quite nice uh, quite useful as it turns out um but you find these things out later yeah. and i had pursued many sports i had the olympic dream so i had the oh i'm going to try this i'm going to try that and uh, I turned out to be decently okay at a few sports, uh, but as many athletes will tell you, if you fail at one and you have the dream, you just keep trying. Mm-hmm. And over time, that accumulates quite a, a broad skill set. I'm not going to say particularly good at one thing. In fact, I would say averagely good at a f- quite a few things, but in aggregate, uh, if you keep adding sports and distance, <laughs> um, eventually there's no one left. <laughs> so that is my success. I just outlast them. <laughs> That's the sport piece. Um, I do have uh, a master's degree in sports medicine, so that helps with, and that was partly to do with my interest in being a better athlete. Uh, and then uh, an honors degree in mechanical engineering, which was my original profession. Uh, and those are quite useful for for putting on events that have stuff in them, like obstacles, for example. It's very, very useful to understand you know, how an obstacle works and how it's safe and things that are kind of useful for the community and the athletes and the events themselves. Yeah. So all of these things kind of led to one thing led to another. I was a pro athlete for uh, 13 years. I was a Nike athlete and had a 
very good career uh, as a professional adventure athlete at a time when there was a lot of international broadcast uh, and consequently a, a lot of advertising sponsorship and, and wealthy events. And it was uh, a lucrative way to make a living for at least a decade. But part of that, my understanding as an athlete was it's not going to last forever. So I needed an exit strategy. And as soon as I became a professional athlete, I'm looking at going, I'd been an engineer. So I was, you know, I was well paid and I had a nice crew, which I enjoyed. I was thinking, oh, this can't last very long. So I thought I need to figure something out for when, when I am no longer a professional athlete. Um, and I thought that would be about three years. So in that first three years of while I was competing, I started working. Actually, I got invited to assist as a race director on some of the events. And that, um, so I went three years and then another 10 years <laughs> as an athlete. But in that 10 years, I'd, I'd made the full transition to producing and directing events um, and worked for, I think you mentioned it, uh, as a contractor to IMG mm -hmm. on various things. Like that worked on Iron Man and uh, Iron Man China and a few other things. And so accumulated a pretty good knowledge of how to run events safely. Had some extraordinarily good um, mentors in the space who are still active today and they they helped uh, that education process, process of <laughs> 10 years of learning how not to screw up too badly. Um, and uh, so now 25 years in uh, on that piece, I feel confident that we, I have a good background and understanding of how all of this stuff comes together. That led into governance and that was, it's a long story which I won't go into, but that was not by design. Um, Ob school just sort of happened at the not a, not coincidentally with the emergence of the iPhone and social media, yeah. So handheld devices, and that stimulated the growth of Ob school sports very very rapidly. Uh, so that, that I guess you would call it an explosion of a sport um, mm -hmm. in the in normal sport context of sports can go on for centuries, um, and it's a slow process. And Olympic cycles are very long, um, so mm -hmm. in in that context. Obstacle sports got very big, very fast. Within a few years, tens of millions of people were doing them. And a lot driven by the, they call it like mud run beer. If your mates would be having a beer at the pub and and they'd be showing selfies of themselves you know, playing in a big playground made of obstacles with mud and stuff. And they call it mud run beer. Um, and it was, uh, it was a cool thing to do. People would just go, hey, that's great. Let's go out for the weekend and play on some obstacles. It's just a big playground. I mean, it's really what... I can't know if you can see the yeah. one behind me, but that's that's a more formalized horse. That was the 2019 World Champs uh, in Moscow on the Moscow River. Fantastic event. About 100,000 spectators. So that's how far the sport has come. And that was about 10 years of, of advancement in the sport, which in any sport is a very short time. So we move at the speed of, I guess, how everyone moves now. Everything's, everyone's thumb scrolling. And that's quick. It's not waiting a week to see a TV show. It's like it's actually in your hand at this moment as fast as you can move your thumb. And that's how fast sport moves. So we've got this interesting convergence of a, a modern sport that's well engaged. I mean, there's people watching TV shows of Ninja Warrior, for example, or Sasuke, Sasuke um, in 160 countries. And that's, we believe it's about a billion viewers. That's that's good. That's healthy for a sport because you want you want the the presence of it, which will probably lead into some of your earlier questions about okay why does this matter and <laughs> and what are we doing and where are we doing it yeah exactly exactly i mean the world obstacle i mean you're like i think you did just mention you'll get involved with um, modern pentathlon in the next olympics um in replacement of the horses aren't you um so how was, if you don't mind me asking how is that going to factor into your plans going into the future uh it's actually it's generated a, a lot of excitement the obstacle discipline in the pentathlon format um, which is proposed to the Olympic program is causing many people, uh, especially the youth who know that they would have an opportunity to compete in Los Angeles 28. Um, there's a, quite a large number of people are, are looking very closely at that. And Im immediately, and I mean like actually in real time, when the first, from the very first pentathlon fifth discipline test event, which was Ankara last, about this time last year, which I think it was this weekend last year, uh, there, there were people at that event, obstacle athletes, who immediately signed up for fencing lessons. So they were like, oh, this is great. <laughs> so they, they jumped in fast. And that's accelerating and expanding worldwide. So we see this almost everywhere now is that 
the obstacle community, some of them, the ones who you know love to do all sorts of sports, mm -hmm. they see it as a really uh, uh, interesting and quick way for potential inclusion on an, in the Olympics, and it's a big deal. Yeah, yeah, it's fantastic. I mean, like you say, if you do one sport like yourself, you end up just doing more and more and more. And you, if you last one left, then you're winning it, aren't you? So. <laughs> That's right. Well, pentathlon, if I'd gone back in time, I, I almost certainly would have been a pentathlete because I love all the sports. And I've learned a lot about pentathletes. Um, the, when they, they are incredibly capable athletes, I think there's a perception there that, oh, they're not particularly good at any one thing. Well, the truth is, Good luck any single sport athlete competing with them. They are extraordinary athletes and they adapted very fast to obstacles. We were watching them within a competition going from this is this is an obstacle and this is how you do it to doing pretty advanced moves. And I think it's because, well, I know it's because of their all-round athleticism. Mm. They can run, they can jump, they've got balance, they've got coordination, they've got all these elements that make a truly well-rounded athlete. And I've been increasingly impressed with the uh, pentathletes and the organization around that supports and builds the, the sport worldwide. They're absolutely terrific. Yeah, they are. it's been fantastic watching it just develop over the last couple of years. Um, so like I mentioned, you'll be joining us in Lausanne, part of the Olympic movement, the Olympic capital itself. Um, why don't you tell us a little bit what um, attendees can expect from your presentation on the 15th? Sure, I'm going to show uh, some things we've already done. Mm -hmm. uh, it's like the uh, event in Moscow behind me uh, and things that we are doing. Actually, by then, we will have had a few more World Cups, the Ninja World Cups. We, we have a few sports. One of them is, we call it Ninja. It uh, looks like the television show, American Ninja Warrior or UK Ninja Warrior or Ninja Warrior France or name a Ninja Warrior or S Sasuke, which is the, the uh, Asian, ver the original version, actually. Um, so it looks a lot like that. Uh, we work pretty closely and we're very friendly with the, the rights holders and producers for the TV shows, which are different because they're entertainment and they are produced. Uh, a viewer actually can't tell the difference um, because they don't they don't see a post-produced show, one that has been you know, run overnight and they do the edit. When you watch that and you watch the, the TV, the sorry, the sport competitions, the actual competitions, um, they're indistinguishable in many respects so some of the formats on the tv shows are indistinguishable from what we do in the sport which is actual racing um well there's several formats one of them is actual racing head-to-head -head racing with lanes so those things uh will show some of that i'll show where they have been um and examples of the things that we need for host cities um and last year when i was at the summit in lausanne it was terrific because we got to talk with many uh, and many very interested hosts who don't need you don't really need to explain much because this thing is the the space is so pervasive in uh in the media be it television or um in social media that everyone really knows about it i was shocked actually i was in africa east africa fully expecting no one to have no clue what this is like what is obstacle to my great surprise and delight uh, by way of social media, I guess, everyone has seen it everywhere that I've been, which is amazing to me. I, I did not expect to be in Ethiopia or Tanzania and then people would know immediately what I'm talking about, uh, yeah. which to me is good because this gives, the, this is what sports should do, right? It should be accessible to everyone in, in every form, meaning you can see it and you can do it. And it turns out um, we've learned that obstacle is very much like that. Uh, it's, it's pervasive. It's something that it's, I haven't yet found a place where they don't know about it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's fantastic. Um, yeah. So like I said, it'll be great to see you again in Lausanne and you obviously had a great time last year. Hopefully we can make it just as good this year as well. Well, Ian, thank you very much for joining us. Thank you for giving up some of your time to do this interview and look forward to seeing you in June. Well, thank you very much. I'm very excited.